Museum of London. As well as get an interactive map online, superimposing Londinium onto modern day London. And we'll be talking about some of the sites that you can see today. There will be some paper sounds. Some soft whisper to relax you and send you off to sleep. When the Romans established a stronghold in Britannia, London was an area. Disputed by the Catuolani tribe, the Trinovantes, and the Cantiaki. The Romans built a temporary fort. century, the capital of the province or the provincial capital was here at Camel Laconium or Colchester. established itself as a large town and became the provincial capital. When the Romans established a settlement there after the conquest it was some years later in AD 60 to 61 that the Queen Boudicca of the East Sini tribe sacked London leading the Roman see some of the civic buildings that were constructed both before and after this event that sparked a great rebuilding and building of the newer city of Londinium. Let's have a look.
was an area that was very important for trade. Guy de la Bédoyère writes that temporary fortifications were erected and London was rebuilt in the second century AD after
intersected Londinium, some of them going very far afield to the ports in the south and the east to the fortification known today as the Barbican. Parts of the amphitheatre. At least its outline can be seen on the pavement. The rest has either been excavated of St. Paul's Cathedral is where you can now see the temple bar which was moved from further up the Thames where the temple church is located also of interest churchyard in 
inspired Charles Dickens in his many novels. A very spooky place in the dark, but very interesting to see. And of course, the tower marks one of the best starting points to circumnavigate Londinium, which itself more or less comprises what is now the city of London, or the very innermost part of London today. And London Bridge now exists, where once the old Roman Bridge stood. In 122 AD, the Emperor Hadrian visited London. was impressed by the many public buildings, the basilica, the baths, the amphitheater. spots that we'll have a look at. It's superimposed on the map of modern London, the dark lines being the old Roman wall and Roman remains. south we have the Thames and this is the old Roman bridge in the place where now the London Bridge is coming across the Roman Bridge we have what is left of a wharf piling at the church of St. Magnus the Martyr actual pile dating from the Roman period stands within the porch entry underneath the bell tower. Part of the old Roman river 
Suicide War. It was discovered at Fish Street Hall in 1931 during the excavation of foundations of a nearby building. Sampling the wood has dated the pile from around 75 AD. So quite early in the Roman occupation. And there you can see the wood set next to the church. As you remember, here we have the villa, big with its bathhouse. It's now called Billingsgate Bathhouse. The remains of the Billingsgate Roman bathhouse date from the 2nd to 3rd century AD and were first discovered in 1848 during construction of the London Coal Exchange. They remained preserved in the building's basement until further redevelopment at the site in the late 1960s gave archaeologists the opportunity to further explore the ruin. Pottery has shown that the house was erected in the late 2nd century comprising a north wing and east wing with a hypercost flooring system. And there you can see the, the pillars or piles there that hold up the floor and the heat goes underneath them to the nice Roman eating. Around a central courtyard. At this time the building was situated on the waterfront of the River Thames. By the 3rd century, a bathhouse was added in the courtyard that contained a frigidarium, or a cold room, a tepidarium, a warm room, and a caldarium, a hot room. The building remained in use until the 5th century, but like the rest of Londinium, was eventually left to ruin. An Anglo-Saxon brooch was found within the collapsed roof tiles. The site was to come, become the first designated protected heritage site in London, forming part of the first Ancient Monuments Act of 1882. Moving east along the old Roman wall, we see All Hallows by the Tower. All Hallows of Barking is an Anglican church overlooking the Tower of London. The church was founded in AD 675 by the Saxon Abbey at Barking and still contains a 7th century Saxon arch built from recycled Roman tiles. Although the church was expanded and rebuilt several times between the 11th and 15th centuries, in addition to cut it during the Blitz, a 2nd century tessellated Roman pavement survives from a domestic Roman building in the church crypts. And there's the tower in that corner. So we're moving north now along the Roman wall. So we'll see quite a bit here. The late Roman Basilica, of which there are only bits visible now, and the London Wall, that as you can see, is quite visible just outside the tower. And much of that section is still intact. Not many people notice it as they walk past, that it is indeed part of the Roman fortifications of old Londinium. The London Wall is a defensive wall that encircled the city of London. It was built between 190 and 225 AD. the last 
most major building projects undertaken by the Romans before Britannia looked to its own defences in 410. Along with Hadrian's Wall and the road network, the London Wall was one of the largest construction projects carried out in Roman Britain. Once built, the wall was two miles long and about six metres high, encircling the entire Roman city. Despite Londinium being abandoned and left to ruin by the Romans, the wall remained in active use as a fortification for more than another thousand years. It was repaired when the Anglo-Saxon rule was returned to London by Alfred the Great during a period of Viking sieges and raids, when he carried out building projects to rebuild crumbling defences, recut the defensive ditch, or what are called the Roman Fossa that encircled the walls of Londinium, and found the resettlement of Lundenberg within the walls. The wall was further modified in the medieval period with the addition of crenellations, gates, and bastion towers. This formed part of a defensive line that incorporated the Tower of London, Bernard's Castle, and Montchais Tower. was not until as late as the 18th and 19th centuries that the wall underwent substantial demolition, although even then large portions of it survived by being incorporated into other structures. Amidst the devastation of the Blitz in World War II, some of the tallest ruins in the bomb-damaged city centre were actually remnants of the Roman wall. see how timeless a Roman construction was, not only architecturally, but practically as well, with, able to withstand the Blitz almost 2,000 years later. And moving north again along the east wall, we will see the eastern Roman cemetery and Aldgate, which is where the Roman gatehouse was to enter London from the east. Moving back into the Roman city, we can see remnants of an early Roman port, all built over now. The first post-Budican port was built at Fenchurch Street in response to the tribes of Britons revolting against Roman rule, and this was under Queen Boudicca of the Iseni tribe, who sacked London. In AD 60 or 61, while the Roman governor Gaius Suetonius Paulinus was leading a campaign on the island of Anglesey, or Mons, off the northwest coast of Wales, Boudicca led the Iseni, as well as the Trinovantes, in a march of total destruction of Rome and Britannia. After the destruction of the first town of Londinium, the Romans looked to fortify their position. This fort was built in the early Roman period, AD 65-80 around the site of 20 Fenchurch Street as a temporary structure. Excavations by the Museum of London at Plantation Place uncovered the northeast corner of the temporary fort and created a reconstruction plan based on these findings. Here you can 
see the Roman streets. And we will look here at the Roman Basilica and Forum. The Roman streets move in a square around this big forum area. As you can tell, it was the center of old Londinium. The first Roman Basilica in Londinium was built in AD 70, with large-scale expansion only 20 years later. So even before some of the other structures, the Forum and Basilica were built, you can see how very important civic life was to the Roman city. The new site was to be nearly four times larger, 170 meters square, and took 30 years to complete, making it one of the largest construction projects north of the Alps. A Roman basilica was a large public building where business or legal matters could be transacted. The forum consisted of three wings enclosed in a rectangular courtyard measuring 100 meters east to west and 85 meters north to south and contained shops, banks and offices with a central marketplace. So there's our basilica there. You can see the Roman roads going around it. Moving back north come to one of the north gates, Bishop's Gate, inside a Roman gatehouse, and the northern Roman cemetery. And we're near what is now Liverpool Street underground. And moving west along the north wall, we can see more of the London Wall that are exposed and much of this was exposed during the Blitz because no one really knew it was there before or no one had excavated it anyway the London Wall around this spot near the Barbican is also near the Royal College of Physicians and alchemy, I think. So the alchemists have, uh, or pharmacists, have a really lovely little medicinal garden that's near the old remnants of the Roman wall. Here we can also see the remains of the Roman amphitheatre. is situated in a vaulted chamber beneath the Guildhall Gallery Complex, discovered in 1998 during a planned expansion of the Guildhall. The remains are displayed in situ and are now a protected monument. London's first Roman amphitheatre was built in AD 70, again at the same time as the Basilica showing the importance of civic life in Rome. It is constructed of wood, but was later renovated during the 2nd century with ragstone walls and a tiled entrance. Able to hold thousands of spectators, the size of the amphitheater is displayed on street level where the circumference of the arena is marked with a black circle on the paving of the courtyard in front of the hall. The amphitheatre was used for various events, including gladiatorial games, animal fighting, executions, and religious festivities. When the Roman province of Britannia looked to its own defences, the amphitheatre became derelict along with the remainder of the Roman 
city and turned to ruin. Further excavations by Molas in 2000 at the entrance to Guildhall Yard exposed remains of a great 13th century gatehouse built directly over the southern entrance to the amphitheatre. So you can see there was a large population around Roman Londinium. And these dark black lines that signify the Roman defences show a square here, which is the Roman port or the Barbican, where the modern Barbican now stands. Much of the Roman defences can still be seen around the Barbican. The Roman port of Lentinium was built around AD 120, just northwest of the main settlement. It covered 12 acres and was almost square in size, 200 meters along each length. As Londinium grew, the fort was later absorbed into the defensive wall that surrounded the city. The fort could house up to 1,000 men and provided suitable barracks and gated entry. However, a century later, the site was decommissioned and buildings dismantled as the military situation in the southern edge of Britannia had become more secure. Today, the fort's northern and western edges still remain visible, along with Saxon fortifications and medieval bastion towers as part of the Barbican and Museum of London complex. Here we're going around the old Barbican. There's the fort gate on the west. So this fort you can see as the Roman roads going from north to south and east to west, as all Roman forts in the empire. And turning again along the city wall, we have Aldous Gate. Roman Gatehouse. And outside the Western Roman Cemetery. Newgate in the northwest. And the remains of a 4th century Roman villa overlying a 2nd century octagonal temple. So many places in the empire, we can see remains of temples or depictions of gods that were either destroyed or changed or built over after Christianity became the religion of the empire under Constantine. In this river, the Alban, there are quite a few Roman remains. There's a Roman tidal mill, dock facilities, and a warehouse. And in St. Bride's Church, designed by Christopher Wren after the Great Fire of London, in 1672 in Fleet Street, activity at this site dates from the Roman period, which is evident by the Roman mosaic located within the church crypt. very good photograph there, but there's also a lapidarium there as well. And then there's our Ludgate, or the western entrance to Londinium. Moving south, let's have a look at some of the more visible structures today. The Roman bathhouse in the city centre. Come to the Mithraeum in a little bit, the temple complex, where remains show successive phases, including a monumental building platform that was constructed in AD 293 to 294. So, what was probably a very large temple. Higgin Hill Baths, so more 
palace or praetorium, a large building discovered near Cannon Street Station has had its foundation dated to the late first century and is assumed to have been the gubernatorial palace or praetorium. It boasted a garden, pools, and several large halls, some of which were decorated with mosaic floors. I presume they mean some of the buildings and not the walls, and the walls were most likely fresco. And this palace was located on the east bank of the now-covered river Walbrook, near its entrance to the Thames. So as you can see here, we have several rivers running through London into the Thames. Many of them have been covered up, so it was a very marshy area with lots of streams. Which brings us to the Mithraeum underneath the new Bloomberg building. The London Mithraeum, also known as the Temple of Mithras, Walbrook, is a Roman Mithraeum temple that was discovered in Walbrook, a street in the city of London, during a building's construction in 1954. Most recently, the Bloomberg tore down that and uh, built a new building and included in their construction a new archaeological excavation of the Temple of Mithras. And now you can go visit this temple underneath the building. There's also quite a nice modern sculpture of the Walbrook or a nod to the Walbrook that used to run there and now runs underground as it's been covered over. And you can see that riverbed here. And that is near the Bank of England and Bank Underground Station. So that concludes our interactive look at Old Londinium from the website Over the centuries, Londinium and its walls withstood many emperors and their policies, including the division of Britain into North and South by Septimius Severus. It survived revolts from Boudicca and from within by the Emperor Carausius and Constantinus. However, it remained a very busy trading port even through Saxon and Danish invasions in later centuries. your mind.